Hey, it's time for another edition of the Minis Challenge, Winter Holidays Edition, hosted by Crafted by Corey. Links to Corey's channel and the playlist will be in the description box. I'm starting out with three mini cups from Dollar Tree and two of these I'm going to use for Starbucks and I printed this sheet of logos from a Google search image. So first I'm going to go ahead and get those cut out so I can get those Mod Podge and my third cup will be for a Dunkin Donuts latte. With my images all cut out, I use matte Mod Podge to apply them to the front of my red cups. My third cup, I had taken that outside and sprayed it with a little white Rust-Oleum paint. And for my Duncan's cup, I'm applying Joy in red and green to look like one of their Christmas cups. And for the tops, I went ahead and traced out on some cardboard the tops of the cups so that I would have something to go ahead and start building a foundation for my whipped cream topping. So for my first topper, I'm using Dollar Tree Spackle and Apple Barrel Nutmeg Paint. So it looks like one of the brownie batter lattes that Starbucks has. So I kind of start out with just a little bit and mix it. And then I gradually add a little more of the spackle and then a little more of the paint until I get enough that I think it'll cover the top of my cup. And once I feel like I have enough, I get one of the Dollar Tree icing bags and I fill that with all of my whip, faux whip topping and that was an utter fail, you guys. This thing started to fall apart. The frosting, the fake frosting would not come out of the top, so I just end up using a Ziploc bag and snipping the ends off and trying to make a little faux whip on my small piece of cardboard. So with it inside the Ziploc bag, it did come out, but I wouldn't have that same little design that the tip of the frosting bag had, but you know, I just have to make it work. So I just, you know, go around and around in a little swirl and I try to give it a little form and then I end up just taking a small craft stick and trying to shape it up so it really looks like some chocolate frosting or maybe like a little chocolate soft serve. And now that my topping has some shape to it, I have a few little slime charms that I wanna stick inside so they can set up with it. A little candy cane, a small glittered Christmas tree, and a little snowman, but I don't end up adding the snowman. And for my next two toppers, I'm gonna to use my bake clay. So I just rolled out a few coils and then I just wrap them around and around onto the topper until they get to about the size that looks appropriate for the cup. And then I use some more of those little slime charms, but this time I'm using a candy cane and a tiny little gingerbread mantis stick on the side. And because this is baked clay, I just have to stick my little charms in to make an indentation and then pull them out because obviously they'll melt when I put them in the oven. And after my pieces had cooled off from baking, they baked for about uh, 30 minutes at 275. I wanted to make sure that they were completely done. Usually it's 15, it's 15 minutes per quarter inch of clay. So I just let, set them for another 15. And once they were finished, I use Apple Barrel Matte White. So they have a bright white whipped look to them. And I'm using my Gorilla clear grip glue and a little hot glue to attach them to the pieces of cardboard. And for the cups, I'm using the same glue, the Gorilla Glue and the hot glue so that the topper will be properly attached and have that quick and the long term hold to it. And 
and then I used my same Gorilla Glue to put glue inside the little indentations I made for my little charms and then I go ahead and add them inside. And now I'm adding gloss Mod Podge to the top of the faux whips and then for the chocolate one I'm adding green and red glitter so it looks like a little bit of sprinkles have been added on top. And I didn't paint the little cardboard topper because it already has the color of a coffee drink so it's perfect the way it is. For one of my drinks, I want it to look like there are pieces of candy cane in the frosting. So I have a larger slime charm that I'm just slicing the little candy cane up. And then I add a little Gorilla Glue and then I just attach my tiny chunks of peppermint. And it just looks so adorable and so real. And then just to be a little extra, I'm adding a few green gem stickers to one of my Starbucks cups. And to go around the edge of all three of my cups, I'm using my Peppermint Look yarn. And here they are all completed. I absolutely love them. They look so yummy, but there's zero calories. But then again, who's counting the calories during the holidays? Our host Corey is so sweet and talented. Please check out her channel for fantastic DIY inspiration. I have scrap fabric from a large gingerbread man doll that I made. And I found this small image on Google. I traced it out on parchment paper. I'm going to make a few small gingerbread men for a tear tray and some other areas to put them in. And then I wanna trace out the shape of this wood round to make a fabric gingerbread face. With all my fabric stitched up, I decide that I want to make a few of them girls. So I just cut out a triangle with some construction paper and snipped off the top to make the shape of a dress. And I have some really cute um, gingham fabric, uh, the Pioneer Woman fabric. I found this at Walmart and I just trace out the image in, and I also used some green gingham that I found at Dollar Tree and I want to use this fabric fusion I found this at Walmart instead of using the hot glue for a no sew option so I'm trying this out for the first time to see how well it works and I just squeeze out a generous amount and spread it onto my fabric and it does end up setting pretty quickly and um, I do believe I will be using this again this is Aileen's brand and I know that tacky glue works really well so I'm happy that this fabric fusion works well and I use it as well to attach the button eyes for my gingerbread For the buttons, I want to make some of them different. So I just apply my Fabric Fusion and I have sequins that I found at Crafter Square area of Dollar Tree. Some of them will get the sequins and then some will get gemstone stickers as their buttons just so they look a little bit different. I'm really loving this peppermint yarn and I think it would make the most adorable mouths. So I snip off a little bit and 
attach it with a little hot glue. I want all the gingerbread men to have the peppermint smile. And their frosting detail, I found mini rickrack at Hobby Lobby for about $2. So I'm applying little bits to the arms and legs to a few of them. And then I'll apply it all over for another one. And then for the bow ties, I have some Dollar Tree ribbon that I'm using just to twist a bit and hot glue it to the center of the neck. And I want to try to use different ribbon for each gingerbread man's bow tie. And for my gingerbread face, I found some larger buttons to use as the eyes, and I attached those with the Fabric Fusion as well. And I used my same Rick Rack trim to go all, array, all the way around the face as the faux icing and the peppermint yarn as the smile. But then I decided that I want to add some little cheeks, so I painted a few gemstone stickers with seashell pink from Folk Art and attached those as the cheeks. And here they are all completed together and I'm so happy with the way they turned out that I made a few more and added some yarn so I can hang them on the tree and I just think they're so adorable. I did change the eyes on a few of them and I used some glass beads from Dollar Tree's Crafter Square and they're just so cute. Okay, for this DIY, I want to make some really delicious looking marshmallows, s'mores, melted chocolate, all that goody yummy stuff. So I'm going to paint this dice with a matte white apple barrel paint and then I have more of my bake clay to use to go along with this. With the paint dry on my cube, the plan was to use some clay and make a smaller version of the dice out of clay. And I had previously made one a few days before and set it aside to dry. And so I'm just showing you the steps that I took to make it. And I formed it into a ball and then I tap it on the countertop to kind of get it squared out. And that's the one that I had that's already dry and that would be the top now this snowman was going to originally be a topper but ended up being so big that I decided it would be a standalone snowman and I would make a few marshmallows that were a bit smaller that I could pop into a tear tray and on top of this red mug that I had found at Dollar Tree For my large marshmallow snowman, I'm adding a bit of light mocha just around the top edge. The image of the marshmallow snowman that I had seen at Walmart, it had this very light brown around the top that looked like maybe it had been lightly toasted. So I wanted to mimic that and I needed to put, you know, the faux coal eyes and buttons on him. So I'm just painting some gemstone stickers with some black paint. So once the glue was dry on my little stickers, I used a little Gorilla Clear Grip glue to add to the back and then I started to put my little snowman guy together and get his face put up and I used a piece of a orange, um, a jack-o'-lantern sticker to make his carrot nose and then I used more of that Gorilla Glue just to attach his head to his body 
and he just came out so adorable. He's just so cute. You'll have to let me know what do you think of my marshmallow snowman. For the smaller marshmallows, I'm wanting these to be s'mores. So I'm taking more of the baked clay and spreading it out so that I can get the shape of a chocolate bar. And I add the marshmallows on top to see if I have the right size. And I pinch off a bit and kind of smooth it out a bit more and once I get the right size and shape then I take a bamboo skewer and instead of dragging it through the clay I just kind of press it down roll it into the clay so that I get the separations that look like a chocolate bar so I end up making one more set of marshmallow snowman and another chocolate bar and then I pop them into the oven for about 30 to 45 minutes at 275 and once they are completely baked I take them out and I paint them with the apple barrel um, matte white for my marshmallows and then I used um, a nutmeg brown mix with a little bit of brown oxide for the chocolate bars. I used paint markers to add the faces and the coal buttons on both of the snowmen and one of them I'm going to give him arms and I use the wire from a pitberry garland I found at Dollar Tree and just snip and bend the wire the brown wire in the garland and then I attach that with a little bit of Gorilla Clear Grip Glue. And while my glue is getting tacky, I'm using adhesive back cork sheet from Dollar Tree to trace out my faux graham cracker. And now I'm starting to assemble my s'mores. I add my Gorilla Glue to the bottom of the faux chocolate and then start assembling them on top of the graham cracker and then start to stack my faux marshmallows on top of that. I give each snowman a little yarn scarf and then I use the red and white yarn to go around the edge of my mug topper so that it looks like it has a nice peppermint trim. Then I did a dry fit and everything looked good, so I removed the adhesive back from the bottom of the cork sheet and stuck it down to the topper. And then I found a few pieces that resemble tiny marshmallows that I made from another project. And I went ahead and just used my Gorilla Glue to apply those so they look like they're floating around the hot chocolate on the topper. And so for this red mug, I found this at Dollar Tree and I'm just applying a piece of masking tape and using 
a white paint marker just to write s'mores on top and then I'll add my topper and that's all she wrote for this DIY. And here they are all put together and they just came out so adorable. I had seen an ornament similar to this at Hobby Lobby and I was so happy that I'm able to remake it at home with items I already had. And here's everything I made in today's video all together on a tear tray. So cute, so sweet. I can't pick a favorite. Tell me which one of these is your favorite. I appreciate all the support and how my channel has been growing. Thank you so much. Please enjoy the playlist and I hope you have a very Merry Christmas.